Hey guys, and welcome to this video on the bubble sort algorithm. So here we want to show why the worst case is what it is and why the best case is what it is for a bubble sort. Now, here I have um, the bubble sort algorithm. This is one way, one of many ways of writing it. Then there's another way of writing the bubble sort algorithm um, that will give us a different best case and another one that basically optimizes for the bubble sort algorithm. So let's go ahead and get started. So here in orange, I have the bubble sort algorithm. It has one, two, three, four, five variables as integers, um, i, j, temp, and then we have our array a, which has three elements, and the elements are three, two, and one, and then n, which is equal to the size of our array, so n is equal to three. Then we have a for loop. The for loop runs from i equals one all the way up to n minus one. So it never reaches the value in here because i is less than n, and then i increments by one each time. And then within this loop, we have another loop, a for loop that runs, uh, that starts at j equals one and runs up until j is equal to n minus one. So again, it never reaches that n value because j is less than n. And then j increments by one each time. And then we have an if statement, and this if statement checks the elements in the array, it compares them. So it sees if the element at position j minus one is greater than the next element, which is at position j, all right? And if that previous element is greater than the next element, then we're gonna swap these elements using um, this, this whole thing here. All that does is swaps the elements, okay? It sets temp equal to uh, the element at position j minus one, and then it changes the position of j minus one and set that equal to the element at position j, and then changes the element at position j to be equal to temp, which was the element at position j minus one. Okay. All right. So let's um take a look here at our array. So we have three, two, and one in our array. All right, and let's use this bubble sort algorithm on here. So first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna go into our for loop. I is gonna equal one. We're gonna go into our second for loop, J equals one. And then we're gonna compare the elements at position one minus one and position one. So we're checking to see if position um, one minus one, which is position zero, is greater than position one. So we're comparing these two elements. Okay, and we can see that again right up here. A, so this whole array here is our A value. And we're checking A at position J minus one. So that's, since J is equal to one right now, that's position one minus one, which is zero. So that's our element three. And we're seeing if three is greater than our next element, which is at position j. Again, j is equal to one, so that's our element at position one, which is equal to two. So we're checking to see if three is greater than two, and three is greater than two, and since it is, we need to swap these two values. Now, right now what we have is a worst case scenario. This is where our um, array is in the complete opposite order than what we intended it to be, or want it to be. So right now it's in descending order and we want it to be in ascending order. So this is the worst case for sure. All right. Um, so what we need to do is we need to swap them. So let's go ahead and swap these two elements. So we get two here, we get three here, and then we get one. All right, and we're not done. So now our uh, J value is going to increment by one. So now our j is equal to two, and two is still less than n, because our n value is three. So now we're checking the elements at position two minus one, which is one. So that's this element, not here, but right here. So that's element three. And we're comparing it, we're seeing if it's greater than the element at position two, since j is equal to two right now. So our element at position two is one, so it's right here. So we're comparing these two elements. All 
all right? And we're checking to see if this element is greater than that element. So if three is greater than one, and it is, and since it is, we have to swap. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our array again. So now we get two, one, and three. And what you can see here is that our three element is bubbling up or going to the right. So we started over here. You know, three was in the leftmost position, then it went to the middle position, and now it's at the rightmost position. Okay? All right, um, but we're not done with this loop yet. Well, we, we're done with, I'm sorry, we're done with the inner loop, but now we have to go back to the outer loop. So now our i increments from one, it increments to uh, two. And two is still less than n, because n is three. So we're gonna go back to our inner loop. J is gonna reset to one again. And now we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna check these two elements. We're gonna compare them, I mean. And we're gonna see if this element, two, is greater than the next element, which is one. And it is, and since it is, we have to swap them. So now we get one, two, and three. Okay, and although we can see that this is sorted and that we're actually done um, sorting this array, um, the, the algorithm doesn't see that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna compare these two elements. So now we see is two greater than three, it's not. And so we're done with our inner loop, all right? And now i is gonna increment again to three. Now three is not less than three, three is equal to three, so we're done with our outer loop as well, and our array is sorted. So how many times did we iterate through this loop? Well, let's check. One, two, three, four times. We have iterated through this loop four times. Or we could think of this as n, which is the size of our array, minus one squared. Why is that? Because n is three, so we get three minus one squared, and that is of course just two squared, which is equal to four. Now, I know you could say it could just be a coincidence, but you can check this with um, uh, another array size, maybe size uh, three, and you should get, I'm sorry, size four, and you should get uh, three squared, which is nine. So this is how many times we ran through this, uh, uh, this algorithm is n minus one squared. So this right here means that this belongs to the set. Yeah, I guess I won't put belongs, so I just put implies. This implies big O of n squared. So that's our worst case. All right. Now let's take a look at the best case. I'm just going to finish erasing this here. All right, so the best case scenario is if we already have an array that's sorted. So instead of us having this three, two, one here, oh, instead of us having three, two, one up there, we now have one, two, three. So one, two, three. So our array is already sorted. And let's run through the algorithm. So first thing we're gonna do is compare these two elements. And we're checking to see if one is greater than two and it's not, so we don't have to do any swapping. Then we're gonna compare these two elements. And we're checking to see if two is greater than three and it's not, so no swapping needs to be done there. 
and we're done with the inner loop. So now we're gonna go to the outer loop and the outer loop now says I is gonna equal two, I'm sorry, yeah, I, I will equal two. And then we're gonna go to our inner loop again. And we're gonna compare our elements. So we have one, two, and three. So we're gonna compare these two again. And we don't need to swap them. And then we're gonna compare the next two. These two. And we check again to see if two is greater than three and it's not. So we don't need to swap them and we're done. So what was the running time of this? It was actually the same. So it's still big O of n squared. And now this is the best case. So before we did the worst case, now we did the best case. Now again, this is just one of uh, one way of writing a bubble sort algorithm. There are other ways as well. And the other ways, um, the best case scenario may be big O of n. But in the case of this algorithm, it is definitely uh, big O of n squared. Okay, and now the last way of looking at this algorithm, we're gonna use summations to kinda figure this out, okay? All right, so first off, we have a summation or a for loop that runs from i equals one all the way to n minus one. And within that loop, that for loop is another loop, so we're gonna write another summation that runs from j equals one all the way to n minus one. And then we have some constant amount of work being done. So what is this equal? This is equal to the summation from i equals one to n minus one of n minus one. And what is this equal? This is equal to n minus one times n minus one. And of course, that just equals n minus one squared. So we get the same answer. All right, guys, uh, that's basically it. I'm sorry if my camera got blurry. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please leave likes, comments, questions, and don't forget to share and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all on the next video.